watching Guitar 101 Rammstein, and this is a video for the absolute beginner on Balama saws. Whether you just got one, or you're thinking about getting one, or maybe you've had one and you're just not sure what to do. Uh, I'm sure if you've been researching it and looking into it, you've already realized it's very difficult to find any tutorials in English on this instrument. In fact, I could be wrong, but I am at least one of the first people I think on YouTube to put some tutorials on this instrument in English. I did a lot of research. It's really tough, you know, because Turkish is a... I don't speak Turkish, and it's a very difficult language to translate. Even with Google Translate, it does not work. So, uh, I'm going to put this, put this uh, beginner set of videos in a few segments. The first one is just going to be going over the, the total basics uh, on how to hold it, how to hold it, how your right hand and left hand are holding the instrument to play it. So let's go over the basics. First, we'll just go over the, the names of everything, you know. I, I'm going to kind of, I don't know the names in Turkish, so I'm not even going to try that. Uh, we're going to kind of use the guitar names. So we have the body, the neck, tuning pegs. This little piece down here is the bridge. This piece up here, it's got these slots strings sit in. It's called a string nut. And if you're looking for the sound hole, you don't see it. It's weird. It's at the bottom. And that's what projects the sound. Um, you see, it's a very... You'll hear me say this a lot about this instrument. It's an awkward shape. It, whether you're trying to hold it, whether you're trying to just set it down without it falling over, or put it in... It doesn't sit in a guitar stand. It's a super awkward shape. So... Holding it is the first thing. And you'll see in my older videos, and probably in some of my current ones, when I'm not paying attention, I do not always hold it correct. I will. I have this tendency, because I'm a, a guitar player, that to hold it like a guitar on the inside of my right leg. You want to hold it on the outside of your right leg. And we got this curve here. This rounded section is going to go about against the side of your belly and over the right side of your leg. And even like that, it doesn't really... you got to use both hands and your wrist to support it so it's not going to just sit there you know like a guitar is really easy to just hold it like that this is like it wants to fall so this hand this arm right about here in my wrist that's going to rest over the edge and you want it at a comfortable position see it might if you can see that angle i don't want to go too far out then i don't have to go like that and i don't want to be too close to where i'm like that i want to have like a bit of space here and a good angle for where i hold the pick all right, and just that alone helps to kind of counterbalance it, whereas the left hand also is going to be playing a part in this. So, like, as a guitarist, you'd probably be wanting to put the thumb on the back of the neck. You can get away with it. I've done it, but it, the, it's causing a couple problems. You're going to actually be using your thumb to fret notes, and, um, yeah, it's hard to support it that way. So we're using the web of our thumb and first finger to go right there. Um, it's like baseball grip on a guitar. It's just wrapped around, and our fingers are here. All right. Frets, before I forget, if you're not used to the word frets, that are all the, that on the neck, all these bands going across. Those are the frets. And that's what we push down on on each string to change the note. They go higher in pitch. Uh, where you push is important. If um, we'll Look at my first fret here. So here's the string nut. Here's the f what we call a fret wire on a guitar. These are actually like nylon bands or something. You don't want to be up here at the top. You don't want to really be in the middle. You want to be as close to the bottom of that fret area as possible. And when I'm holding it this way to show you what I mean by bottom. It went out of tune on me. Another tip for tuning. If you're trying to do it like this, it's really hard to, especially with these kind of pegs. Just lay it flat on your lap. You get much easier leverage on the tuning pegs. All right, I've got some videos up on tuning, and I'll be doing more because there's so many ways to tune this thing. We'll go into that later. But you want to hold the fret at the bottom of the fret. That takes the least amount of effort, and your fingers are going to be closer to the other frets. It's and it also gets you trained to aim for a smaller target. When I talk about holding it on this part of your leg on the right side, you know, you can do this. It will work. You can still, it's a lot more comfortable for me, to be honest. There's a problem with that, though. I'm covering the sound hole when I do that, and that changes the sound. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to turn this way so it projects more towards the microphone. But um, I'm 
covering the sound hole with my leg. Now I'm going to move it out of the way. Not sure how well that picks up on the microphone, but I can hear a big difference here. So it kills some of your tone when you hold it wrong. One little tip, maybe it's not very good advice, but it, it's a cheating hack. But maybe for me it works because it's helped me get out of that habit because I tend to try to do this without realizing when I'm playing. Um, is if I'm sitting next on the right side of a couch, I'll sit close to that area. The sound hole's not covered by it, but the, this part is just bumped against that. It's kind of nudged in between my leg and the couch, so it helps me kind of just keep it there and not want to just involuntarily move it over. So that might help you, but uh, who knows. If you're used to playing guitar, maybe that's a good way to try. If you're not, maybe don't do that and don't use it as a crutch. All right, so now the right hand for the pick, the plectrum, however you want to call it. We're not using a guitar pick. We're using these funky, weird shaped picks. They're like rubber. They're really flimsy and they're long and oval shaped. Um, they do come in different gauges. These are, I'd like to try some heavier ones out or find some others I have that are maybe heavier, but personal preference. So there's different ways to hold them, but I'm going to show you like the more common way. I'm holding it between the thumb and finger. And you can start, there's usually like a circle in the middle. You can start somewhere about there, but you see there's a lot sticking out and it's so flimsy it's really hard to play like that. It's easier maybe for a beginner so you don't miss the strings, but it's a very, um, it's so flimsy it, it doesn't pluck with much volume. And it's harder to control for me. So after you're kind of getting used to it, you can experiment and try to just let less and less of the pick sticking out from your fingers. That gives it, um, it, gets, it gets more rigid. And also the angle. We don't want to hold it what we call flat picked, where it's like parallel with the strings, flat against the strings. We want to angle it like that way. So it's going, I don't know, like 45 degrees or so. So basically like this part of my thumb, if it's flat, or this part of my hand, I should say, it's gonna kind of rotate that way. So it's, I'm not like moving that way, I'm moving down and up, but it's kind of like slicing through the strings this way. There's less pick resistance. All right, and that's really the basics of, you know, left hand, right hand, and how to hold it tuning. There's a lot of different ways to tune it. And even in a recent video I just put up yesterday, I screwed up in saying what tuning I'm using. Because I have, this is a new one, it's a short neck baglama. I have two long necks that I've had for a while. This one's new though. And I do use different tunings. There's a lot of different possibilities of tuning on the baglama. This one is tuned from the very top strings here to A. Then we have a higher pitched A, higher octave. The middle two are D, and the bottom three are G, and three, two octaves of that G. That's kind of a pretty standard tuning, even though there is no real standard tuning for this instrument. There's a lot of different ones, which I do go over in some videos, and I'll be going over more, because there's so much involved with the tuning possibilities. You gotta be careful though. Almost every video I see on this instrument there's someone demonstrating or giving a lesson, and there's always the same question. What tuning are you using? So um, I've seen some where they explain it. And I'm like, hey, that sounds cool. I'll try it. And trying to get up to pitch, up to pitch, almost there, and pop. I break a string. It's very easy to break strings because you're over-tightening them. Some people change which gauge strings they have on there. So this is, a, I'm guessing, like a standard gauge for the Balama. So this tuning is safe. Uh, I've seen some tuned up like, instead of like this, it'd be one, two, like four frets up on this instrument. So it's up to here. And that I'm a little bit scared to try. I'm gonna, I ordered some digital calipers to check the gauges of each string and then I know what exactly is on each one. And then I'm gonna be experimenting with that to see how far I can go with them and how loose I can go with them before they start flopping around and not making proper sound. Keep a watch out for those videos in the near future whenever this set of digital calipers arrives. All right, so that's it for the beginner part one. In part two, I'm going to go over just some tips on 
general things to make it a lot easier to learn and play. And also some things as far as the music and things you can listen to to just get more inspired and more ideas of how to play the instrument. That's one of the interesting things about this. It's got 15 notes, where Western music is 12 notes. We have seven natural notes, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and five accidentals. Those are sharper flat notes. Whereas this instrument has 15 notes. So it's got these weird notes that will sound out of tune if you're not used to anything else from Western music. See what I mean? So those are a little trickier to use. They're called microtones. They're notes in between notes in our Western music system. And um, we'll be going into more stuff about that as well. So that's the first part of the video. Hit like, hit subscribe, and hit that bell notification because as I'm putting a lot of videos on this up lately, you won't miss them that way. Um, Till next time, I'll get started on this next one. And so it should be up around the same time this one's up or very, very shortly after.